You are listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. Studio MacGyver and you are listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and Video Game Podcast. Today we have some news um, I'm pretty sure you guys will enjoy. Uh, the episode 114 uh, just got finished not too long ago and um, there were some interesting developments in this episode guys. i um, going to get into it real quick. Let's begin. All right. Now, uh, I'm sure everybody knows that's listening. If you've seen Dragon Ball Super, you probably already know. And you heard about Khalifa and you heard about Kale and you heard about the uh, Patora earrings and all of that. And they have actually uh, formed to become Kafla. I guess that's how you pronounce it. K-A-F-L-A. Um, if I'm wrong, somebody correct me. But that's how I'm going to pronounce it moving forward, at least right now. I also want to say, uh, please forgive the noise that you guys are going to be hearing today. Uh, I didn't get to record the podcast um, like I usually do, which is on Saturday. So uh, I stay close by uh, the airport. So you might hear some noise, a um, little bit of light, subtle background noise. So please bear with me, guys. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on from that. But let's begin. Um, yeah, there's a transformation. And uh, Goku basically had to go super saiyan god red he didn't go blue he didn't feel he needed to go blue and up until that point uh he really didn't need to until (laughs) until they uh made their little uh transformation but they left us on a cliffhanger and uh we're not really actually going to see them fight until next episode and apparently uh super saiyan blue is not going to be enough to take uh kafla out of the game or out of the tournament or whatever. So I'm guessing. And like I said, I'm, I'm strictly guessing. And this is just what I think is going to happen. I think she's going to make him go super Saiyan blue. He's going to go super Saiyan blue and he's still not going to be able to take her out. She might slightly have an advantage. And then he's going to probably have to tap into that new, uh, that new technique or that new form or whatever you guys call it. You know what I'm saying? The ultra instinct thing to take her out of the game. Now, I don't know. I can't predict what's going to happen. That's just me assuming what's going to happen off of just seeing the preview for the next episode and just kind of judging on the title and all of that stuff. So I'm going to leave that on the table. I mean, you guys can definitely join in, chime in, leave some comments. Tell me what you think might happen um, or might not happen. But that's just how I'm seeing it going forward. Um, also, they actually showed a little bit of uh, Vegeta and Tapo, um, which surprised me. I thought they were just going to focus on this fight uh, for the next two, three episodes. But I'm I'm liking what they did, uh, even though it was still just bare bones. And if you ask me, I mean, they could have done a little bit more on the episode before that, because this whole time you still wonder what's going on in the tournament with everybody else. I mean, at least give us a taste. And that's pretty much what they did this episode. They gave us a little taste of what was going on a little bit um, around uh, with the other fighters. And Frieza even got got in this. And he, Frieza was thirsty. He really wanted to get his uh, his beak wet. He really wanted to try out uh, Kel and Khalifa. And uh, basically Goku stopped and was like, look, stop it. This is my fight. Let me handle that. Let me take care of this business. Yada, yada, yada. And Frieza basically said, OK, cool. I'll uh, I'll let you guys beat each other up. And, you know, I think I'll enjoy it. So I'll sit back and um, get some popcorn. And that's where we are right now, pretty much for this episode, guys. I mean, not too much else has been happening. Um, we're trying to figure out who's going to be the last uh, some of the last fighters standing. And it's it's coming down to the end now. Um, 
I don't like looking, you know, too far into the future because then, you know, people will say, well, if you read the manga, this and this and that's like, I'm look, don't, I don't want to know. Um, I will let, uh, I will let everything happen as the episodes unfold. I kind of like to watch it like that. I try to stay away from spoilers for my own, uh, for my own safety as well. I just, I don't like to know too much before I've seen what I need to see. Cause you know, you don't want to spoil it, man. Come on. You know, sometimes you want to, you know, you want to enjoy it as it comes, you know, and I'm assuming that me talking about what I'm talking about now to you guys, I'm assuming that you all have seen this episode and you guys are just wanting to hear what I think about it or, you know, when me maybe wanting to discuss it, you know, uh, in the future. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. In episode 114. I mean, that's pretty much it. So I'm just looking forward to uh, 115 and see what's going to happen next. Um, now. <sighs> I mean, like I said before, I, I don't know where this, where this is going, uh, where this tournament arc is going right now. It's it's up in the air, but um, you know, leave it to Toy and those guys to um, to make us uh, make a stand at attention and try to find out what's going to happen next. So that's all you can really do, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing at least. Now on to uh, other things um, related to Dragon Ball, um, and a lot has happened. In the last week, guys, since you last heard from me now, as of this episode, as of this recording right now, you know what I'm saying? Take everything I say up until that point. And right now it is a Sunday um, and you guys will probably be hearing this Sunday night, early Monday morning. OK, I usually I like to put these out, you know what I'm saying? Late Sunday night, early Monday morning. That's the time I usually have these podcasts up and running. So. Um, as of right now, there are not one, but two upcoming Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 DLCs. Now we've talked about the fifth DLC already, but what blew my mind was the fact that there was another announcement for a sixth DLC. So these guys are planning on supporting this game for quite some time. I mean, we only have four scheduled we get five and now we get six. This is amazing. And six, all we know right now is that there are four new character slots. So I don't know who those characters characters could be. They could be somebody from uh, this arc. We, I mean, could it be Topo? Could it be my boy Jiren? Could it be, you know, who could it be, man? I don't know. Could it be, you know, a new Goku form? Could it be Ultra Instinct? I don't know. I, I can't, I can't speculate, but, um, I mean, I'm sure excited about it, though, because I'm already excited enough about the fifth DLC, which is kind of crazy because we still do not have a release date for this, guys. We still don't. We have a release date for Dragon Ball Fighters, but we still don't have a release date for the fifth DLC, which is coming out before Dragon Ball Fighters. So it kind of doesn't make sense to me why these guys won't release a release date for this new update. I, I don't understand that. Um They've kind of been like this uh, in the past. They they will give you a release date weeks, you know, leading up to it. So they might give us a release date tomorrow and we'll get the DLC two weeks from that date. That's I mean, that's how they do it. Whatever. Um, but they need to hurry up and come on, man, because I'm getting restless. Um, I really am. I'm, I'm trying to put Tapion out there in those Dragon Ball streets. And uh, Trust me, you'll be hearing me talk a lot of shit on these upcoming podcasts and challenging a lot of people and challenging myself because this is a character that um, I did not think was going to make the roster. He made it and now I'm going to use him. I was looking forward to playing as the board, but now that I know that Tapion is in the building, that is going to be my main stay focus. And that's who I choose to use to get good at in this game. I'm going to challenge myself to get as good as I possibly can get with the time that I have with Tapion, man, and I'm going to do it well, and I'm going to have faith in myself, and I'm going to, I'm going to make that happen, you know what I'm saying, so, you know, it's always good to challenge yourself every now and again, right, so that's the character, now, moving forward with that, I mean, that's good news, guys, I mean, two DLCs, continuation of this, uh, this game, which I love to play, but, you know, I always deemed in the past it was slightly broken as far as, you know, some of the net code issues and um, hit boxes and therefore things like that. And, um, you know, just some of these uh, abilities and stuff, man, that just a lot of people find out and exploit and spam the shit out of. 
You know what I mean? So hopefully they fix a lot of that. And like I said, it's always been a great game. If you're a Dragon Ball fan to just pick up and play. I mean, it's always fun. Always will be fun. So hopefully they make it a little tighter. And there are a lot of fans who love this game and who continue to play this game to this day as we speak right now. So that's a beautiful thing to see. And uh, I'm looking forward to, like I said, this DLC myself. Uh, until this comes out, I'll be, uh, well, I have been uh, the last couple of days trying to get my Naruto Ninja Storm for uh, playing. I've been trying to teach myself how to play Ninja Storm 4. Yeah, I'm kind of starting from the from the top and working my way down. So I'm going to try to learn the ins and outs of four and then work my way to three and so on and so forth. But I really enjoy Ninja Storm 4 now, man. I went to a friend's house and I think I explained this guys in the past, but um, I really discovered that this game is actually pretty fucking dope. And especially when you start learning the little small intricacies and um, a lot of the ins and outs that, you know, most people who were just from the outside looking in not know about. You know what I mean? Once you start playing it and you start realizing certain things like, oh, that's how you do that. Or, oh, if I do this with this character, I get to do that with this one. So it's it's very fun, especially if you're a Naruto fan, a new Naruto fan like me, myself. Love the show. Love that fucking show, man. But anyway, um, yeah, man, this game. um I'm really loving it right now. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. Um, And, you know, juggling two games that right now. And then uh, I had to put down Dragon's Dogma for a little bit because I kind of just I I burned myself out a little bit. So I need to take a chill pill on that before I jump back on it. So Naruto is going to uh, soften that uh, soften that blow for me and let me uh, hopefully I can learn some new shit and I can get out there in those Naruto streets and I can uh, put myself out there and see what I have learned. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, Um, that's pretty much been what I've been doing the last week since you guys heard from me. Um, Yeah, that's it. Um, One more thing I do have to talk about, guys. Um, You guys probably knew about this game. Um, if you haven't, if you're new to the podcast and I have to say this, um, I also got wind of some new video game footage, gameplay footage of shadows of the colossus the remake uh this game i'm telling you right now guys if you like action adventure games like i like action adventure games open world type of uh games dark eerie um lore heavy um games games that make you think uh games that have you after the credits roll just sitting there wondering uh in amazement it's 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 almost to say, man, it, it, it's not even a game to me. It's more like a experience or art um, if you look at it like this. But Shadows of the Colossus, man, the remake is going to be awesome, guys. If you haven't seen the video or the footage, please take it upon yourself to check it out. Just go to YouTube, Google Shadow of the Colossus PS4 footage or gameplay. And ah, I'm telling you, your jaws will drop. Um, I'm a big fan of Team Eco slash Gen Design. Those are the guys who made this game. They're also the makers of Eco and one of my other games that I love so much, um, The Last Guardian. Yes, and I actually have the collector's edition of that. I pray and I hope that they have a collector's edition for Shadows of the Colossus. I really do, man. But if they don't, I mean, I'm going to be a little hurt. But at the same time, a little bit relieved uh, because I assumed that this game was going to be full price, fifty nine ninety nine plus tax, which comes to about sixty four dollars and some change. Now, it's only going to be thirty nine ninety nine out the gate. So, I mean, you can't hate that, right? You cannot hate that. So, of course, it's not going to be a download for me. It's going to be a purchase. There are certain games that I just have to have in my hand, uh, physical copies of. I'm sure a lot of you guys Uh, understand what i'm talking about here and you know there's a lot of them that you know are casually you know i I play casually and i just you know well cool i'll download this one um you know like a maybe a sports game like a madden or or something like that i might download but anyway this is a game you have to own i have to own at least um i don't know about you guys but that's just me i have to own this guys and i pray that they have a collector's edition there are a lot of, of um a lot of diehard T 
Team Eco slash Gen Design uh, fans out there who can't wait to play this. And then for the people who don't know about these games, I mean, it's a perfect time to pick it up and play it. I mean, and it's not even full price, brand new. You get a chance to play this. You get a chance to check it out in all its glory. Basically just a Super Saiyan version of the original, which came out for PlayStation 2. And then they re-released a, um, a HD collection with Eco and Shadows of the Colossus, which I also own. Um, and it looks good even now, still to this day, still looks good there. You know what I mean? So just, I mean, leaps and bounds of what they've done um, in the past. And ah, man, the game is beautiful. It looks spectacular. And I can't wait to sink my teeth into this game. Um, just a beautiful game, man. I just remember the game having no low time on PlayStation 2. This was unheard of uh, back then. I mean, this game was ahead of its time. No loading times. I mean, there was there were just it was basically boss fights. You had the whole map to explore. And you you did it how you wanted to do it. And you went and tackled, you know, you went and you tackled the Colossi. You, it was an order to it. But as far as where you could go and where you could roam um, on the map, it was whatever you wanted. You can roam whatever, wherever you needed to. It was just an awesome game, guys, and now they've remade it. Now, the only thing, the only other question I have now is, are they going to do Eco? Are they going to redo Eco? They have to redo Eco as well, man. Um, they just, they just have to. If they're going to do Shadows, they got to do Eco. Hopefully they will. And like I said, hopefully they have some kind of, uh, collector's edition, um, for these games. Cause I haven't heard anything yet. Could get lucky. Who knows? Um, uh, that has pretty much been my week. Um, that's what I've been doing, man. Not too much of much. Um, sitting back watching some Naruto movies as well. I uh, have not seen all the movies. Um, I plan on watching uh, Road to Naruto tonight. Um, tr- started it um, yesterday, but man, I was swamped with a lot of other shit. So I had to put it on a back burner. But I will be trying to get that done tonight. I think I've watched, what, three or four movies now up until this point. Uh, so yeah, man, I'm trying to, you know, still trying to get my watch on <laughs> all that good shit, but, uh, that's it guys. I mean, I think I'm gonna leave it at that on this episode, but I do want to thank everybody for listening, for tuning in every week, because you guys are the ones who make this all possible. And also you guys are going to be the ones to take me to that next level, guys. I promise. I mean, everything is getting better. Uh, the Facebook page is blowing up. We're almost at a thousand uh, follows. Um, I think we're like around 850 right now. So in a couple of weeks, guys, we should we should definitely be there. We should we should cross that pinnacle of 1000 likes and follows. So let's make that a reality. Um, if you have any questions, comments and concerns, I say this all the time. You can always reach me at Twitter at Studio MacGyver. You can also check out my Instagram at Studio MacGyver 79. Like I said, the Facebook page at Studio MacGyver all day long, baby. Uh, the YouTube channel. That's what I want to talk to you guys about real quick. Hey, man, it's a channel that I put together and I'm focusing on and I have so much content. Um, I have three, four, five, six, sometimes seven videos a week, guys. You know what I mean? About pretty much all things gaming and all things anime. So just be looking out for that. If you haven't subscribed, please go there and subscribe. All you got to do is go to YouTube, type in Studio MacGyver and boom, hit the channel, hit the like, hit the subscription. And, you know, you'll be joining the Studio MacGyver team. Let's make this happen. I'm I want to grow with everybody. I want to be able to look back and say, man, I remember when I didn't have but five followers or <laughs> five subscribers. I remember when I first started my first podcast and I had nothing. And now, you know, it's growing. And to see it grow like it has been growing, guys, already has been just a gift um, and a blessing. So uh, with that being said, I appreciate every last listener for lending me your ears. I want to say I love you all. And I hope that um, you continue to uh, travel with me through this uh, this book called Life, man, and the podcast and everything else beyond. Because I got a lot of hopes and a lot of dreams with this anime and video game shit. And we're going to do it together. So with that being said, this is Studio MacGyver. And you have been listening to Studio MacGyver's Dragon Ball and video game podcast. See you next time.